In the last video, we enabled the GPIO B, the port B, because in port B, the SDA, the I squared C, SDA and SCL is located on port B pin six and seven. And we set up those pins for the alternate function of the I squared C and the I squared C was enabled. And we set up the timings for the I squared C as specified with the information in the ADXL 345 data sheet. And then we set the peripheral enable bit in the first control register for the I squared C. And I need a one here. Now I'm ready to get into the control register number two, which is more specific to the actual communication. And the first thing I'd like to do is apply the slave address. And we're gonna apply the slave address in one through seven, bits one through seven, because this bit is reserved for read and write. So let's go ahead and do that. Access the I squared C. I'm gonna access the I squared C control register two. And I'm gonna place the slave address into this control register, directly into this control register, because if you look at the, the entire 32-bit register, the slave address actually starts from zero to nine. And if we just apply it directly, it's gonna start, it's gonna fall right at this location anyway. So since we want it in one through seven and not zero through six, we wanna left shift at one. And from the data sheet, we know that the device ID is 1D in hexadecimal. So we'll need to use that. So I'm gonna take the 1D and I'm gonna left shift it by one place, one bit place. And by doing this, I'm reserving the, the zero bit for the read write. Now we're ready to tell the microcontroller which direction we would like to transfer, if we're gonna read or write. And that's this particular bit here. And you might be wondering, why aren't we changing this bit? And that's because a lot of things are happening behind the scenes within the microcontroller itself. And by affecting this bit, you are telling the microcontroller to deliver the data on the SDA line appropriately, which will cause a transfer on the line with the address and the read write bit correctly applied. Also, you wanna make sure that you set the, the address and the read write before you do a start condition. So let's go ahead and go to the, the WRN bit and let's take a look at and see what we need to do first using the ADC 345. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so we wanna do a single byte read. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do a write. So let's go ahead and set the direction for a write and that's gonna be a zero. And to put a zero in that bit, we're gonna use the AND NOT. Now let's tell the microcontroller how many bytes we would like to write. Let's go ahead and take a look at the data sheet again. And it looks like we wanna write one byte in this particular case. And that's the register address. So how do we do that? So this is at location number 16. So we want to put the number of bytes within this area. So we're gonna to have to do a left shift. And we'll use the OR bitwise operation. And we're gonna have the number of bytes left shifted 16 times. So we want one byte. If we wanted two bytes, then we just replace this with a two. If we wanted four bytes, we would replace this with a four. So we just want one byte. So let's go ahead and establish that. Now I can go ahead and establish the start condition. And to establish the start condition, I'm just gonna put a one in the start bit, which is the 13th bit. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we're gonna put the address of what register we would like to affect from the ADXL 345 accelerometer. And let's look at the addresses that we can, uh, we, can, we can write to and then read from. We're gonna, we need to write or we need to access a register address by first writing that register address and then getting, getting the acknowledge and then restarting and then reading from that address. I'm gonna select a register address that already has a reset value within it. The addresses that have reset values are zero. You can see one here that has a number in it and that's at 2C. Another one at 30 and it looks like that's it. I'm inclined to go with this reset value, the re uh, register address of 2C because I wanna make sure that in the program when I send the address, I'm going to actually be able to look at the address 
in the logic analyzer and make sure that it's 2C. If I get a 0, 0, but I get a right number, then I'm not really sure if I'm actually delivering an address or I have some other kind of bug going on that delivered a 0. So this way I can, I can be sure that I have some kind of actual address that I can verify as 2C. We need to put the hex value of 2C into the transmit data register. But before we do that, we want to make sure that we have a start condition established. And the way we confirm this is just to test to see if this start condition is true in the control register. So let's write that. Let's take a look at the start bit in the control register number two. This is on bit number 13. By writing a one, which we've done on that bit, we are creating a restart or start generation. It states that this bit is set by software, which is what we do, and is cleared by hardware after the start followed by the address sequence is sent. So we should be able to test for this one, for this start bit. And if it is cleared, we can move ahead. But there is another bit called the TC bit at bit number six in the status register called the transfer complete. It states that it is cleared by software when the start bit or stop bit is set. What I'm trying to do here is determine when the microcontroller is ready to send data on the I squared C line. I don't want to just put a byte in the transmit data register until I know it's ready for a byte to be placed in that register. I'm not sure the state of the transfer complete before the start bit has been set. I don't see anything else here that could be telling me when I'm ready to send. So I'm just gonna use the start the start bit and test the start bit to make sure it's cleared because I am I know that the address sequence has been sent. So I should be alright by just placing the byte within the transfer data register after I test for this for this bit. So while the start bit is set, I don't want it to do anything. And I want it to, when it clears, I want it to go to the next step. I forgot a one here again. All right. Now I think I'm ready to insert the, the byte or the register address into the transmit data register. The transmit data register is TXDR. And we're just gonna assign the byte to this register. So the byte was 0x2c, I believe. Now before we move on, we need to make sure that this has been sent on the line. And the way we figure that out is there is a status bit called TXE. This is the transmit data register MT flag. It's under the status register and we can see it over on bit number zero. And it says that this bit is set by hardware when the TXDR register is empty. So we know that the TXDR is empty because it has already transmitted that data on the SDA line. So we want a line in the code that says, while this bit is zero, not set, it'll wait. So we want a not on, uh, before this statement. And the I squared C, one, and we're Looking in the ISR, the status register, and the mask is the TXE bit. So we've, in the single byte read, we have performed the start sequence. We've written the slave address and the register address. This is done automatically when we apply the start condition because we've already set the slave address into the register that we needed to set it. And we've sent the register address on the line and now we need to do a start and then a read. But before I do that, I wanna check the line. I wanna make sure that so far what I've done works. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a stop condition and we can flash the market controller and see if the SDA line does have both the slave address and the register address sent on that line. The stop condition is very similar to the start condition. We're just gonna replace the start with the stop. And the test is the same as well because the hardware automatically resets the stop bit just like it did with the start bit. So let's go ahead and just do a copy and paste. And we're just gonna change this to stop. So let's review what I've done here. 
and I'm going to write in comments as I do a review of the communication portion of this. On this line, we set the slave address or the slave ID, and we left shifted it by one to make room for the, the read or write bit. On this line, we're setting the read write bit to write by putting a zero in that location. And on this line, at the 16th bit in the control register 2, we're setting the number of bytes that we're going to send. Here we're establishing the start condition. And on this line, we're making sure that the start condition is met. Then we write the register address to the transmit data register. To confirm that the transmit has, a, has been established, we are testing to make sure that the transmit data register is empty. And finally, we are establishing a stop condition. The stop condition automatically applies a NAC to the SDA line, informing to the slave that no further data will be transmitted or received at least until a start is reestablished. Now we're finally confirming that a stop condition has been established. Now I'm gonna do a build to make sure everything is good. It looks like I have a couple errors here and I forgot to put an R after the PUPD and the GPIOB, so that's correct that and do a do a rebuild so it looks like I have no more errors and the build is successful now I can flash the microcontroller and look at the line with my logic analyzer to make sure we have the correct data on the line Since nothing can be seen on the microcontroller, I'm going to show the results in the logic analyzer. I have the analyzer set to I squared C. I added uh, one of the many that can be created. And the I squared C is using the channel 0 and channel 1 lines. You can see it says SDA and SCL. And when I press start, it'll start listening on those two lines. So I need to set this up so it will give me enough time. It says duration five seconds. That should be enough for me to, now I'm gonna change it to 10, I think, for me to get the data when I power up the microcontroller. I haven't flashed a microcontroller yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, the microcontroller has been flashed. So when I unplug the microcontroller and then plug it back in, I'm gonna do that while I have the logic analyzer listening to those lines. So I'm going to go ahead and press start. Okay, I've disconnected it and then connected it again. We can see that there is information written to the line. You can see that in the act of unplugging it and plugging it back in, I got two occurrences of it. So it must have, when I was plugging it in, it must have had multiple power down and power ups because of the connection, the mechanical connection of the USB port. So let's take a look at it. It looks like we have a write and a 3A. And let's take a look at the program while we're doing this. Let's see how small I can get this. Probably not going to be able to see it, but I'll just go back and forth. Okay, so we put a 1D in the slave address register and we left shifted at 1. So when we do that, the 3A is the correct number for that because we're actually changing the number by left shifting it by one. And we got an ACK back from the slave, which is good. And it's interesting, it says comma. So I guess 2C is a comma in ASCII. So I have, let's see, uh, yeah, ASCII and hex. So I'm telling it to tell me what is the ASCII equivalent of the hex. And it says comma. And we got a 2C, which is good. So we did write that address correctly, and it did transmit that address on the line. And then we received an ACK 
by the slave. And we should be able to see it on the line here as well. So let's see if we can get to that. We should have two of them. Oh, this is one of them, and this is probably another. I don't know. So let's see if we can look at it. Okay, this is it. And you can see that... Oh, this is... I see what's going on. This was when the my controller was disconnected for a moment. So let's go back over here and take a look at... This is how tiny this communication is. And it happens within... Actually, this is milliseconds, and this is microseconds. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have a write. This is the green as the start condition. And the green, the having this go down, this line go down, and then this line go down signifies on the I squared C that this is a start condition. And then when this line goes up, which is the SCL, and then this line goes up, which is the SDA, then that signifies a stop condition. You can see that there is the first section here is a write. 3a and that is the slave address plus on bit zero a write condition and then next we sent the 2c and you can see that we have a waveform that shows the 2c and these are just zeros and ones ones and zeros so the down is a zero and the one is the, the up is a one and each scl pulse here will separate these numbers these bits this has been quite a long video and explanation, so I'm going to go ahead and stop here. And in the next video, we'll take a look at reading the information in that register. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching.